Welcome to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast where we break down real problems from real situations and discuss realistic solutions. And here are your hosts, owners of Allen Safety LLC, Joe and Jen Allen. Training failures. Today, YouTube. That's what we got. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Podcast. We did not wave at you. Yeah, but I nope, did. But I, I did. I but did you in can theory. Feel it, you can feel it in your spirit. Yeah, so you're driving down the road. It's like, that makes you feel good. Yep. There you go. All right. So this was on training failures. Not training opportunities because sometimes. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's Let's be real. It's, it's called a failure. Fail sometimes. So here we go. We got alligators. All right. So we had alligators. A big one in the, lived in the yard there forever. We had some small ones. Why am I starting this off? Because if you believe that you can take a whole bunch of videos and learn everything about how to wrestle alligators, and you decide you're going to go out in my backyard and try it for the first time, there's a good chance you may not win. I'm going to get a phone out. Yeah, so the point about it is, if you want to talk about failures, you need to look at end result. And end result could be, I lose with that gator. So so think think about your training. I think think the the failure is not identifying what subjects should be hands on. That's correct. You got to have it. So one of the first, have it. so one of the training failures is attitude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't have the right attitude, go do something different because if you don't want to have the right attitude, if you're not attitude, a people person, you probably shouldn't be training other people. Yeah. And if, and if you don't like it, maybe you don't want to do it. I don't, know. don't don't be a trainer, you know, because if you walk in the There's person, a whole world if, of opportunity out there. If you're in a, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, you have to go to work. And tomorrow I got to go to work. And you know what? The attitude I have from today could be affected by my training yesterday. And the attitude you have today being a trainer could be affected from yesterday. You have to be positive and you have to have a good attitude no matter what. Yeah. That's yeah. The, so if you don't have a good attitude, everybody feels it and it brings down all the training. Why is it the first two things we're talking about? Because we believe that. We believe at seven o'clock, you got to be in a good mood. So well, I think happy people like to be around happy people. Yeah. So if you're energized and happy and excited to be there, yeah. that's going to change the the psychology of what's going on in your class. And, and it's also going to change how well they receive the information Absolutely. and how much of it sticks. Because, you know, as a trainer, you have to understand that not everything is going to stick. That you say. They're going to forget stuff. But I think you increase that percentage of, you know, what they retain if the environment is right. Yeah, and I so know attitude that, is a huge component in that. You know, we, we manage live events and catastrophic events and things that happen to people and product and processes. And you know what? They happen all the time. And there's so many days where I get up and something went wrong that night before I had to get up early to manage that. That client that I'm at that day still expects a certain product at 7 a.m. Oh, yeah, they don't care. No, so I have to. I mean, to, not being a jerk. I mean, able, they may care, so but like they're still you. paying. One thing you got to do is you got to be able to compartmentalize. You got to yeah. be able to turn off all the control variables around you. Did you miss your kid's soccer game? Does it make you sick? Absolutely. Does it make your wife aggravated when you miss T-ball games? Yes. And they have to manage a small toddler alone that won't Yes, still, but you have to be day. able to go. You know, you know, at night you're going to get in trouble for not being at the T-ball game, but you still have to do a good job today. Yep. So, uh, all right. So yep. lack of uh, product consistency. Another weird thing that's a failure is uh, people allow weather or time of day or who's in class to affect them. I don't believe in that. I who's believe in class. This is a big one to me because it's, it's corporate. Yeah. Like if corporate randomly shows up, that should not change your class. No, be be a professional. Be, don't the whole be time. weird. Be a professional. Be, <laughs> so be polite. Like yeah, it's be weird. A they like do all this weird extra stuff. I'm like, just do your regular yeah. thing. You know, you it, know? If it, if the, guess what? Yeah. I have events and all kinds of weather. And for everyone else who doesn't know, in, in the world has weather. And because of that, the what? weather changes. Big deal. I'm going to tell you where it doesn't change, and that's Monterey Bay. That's like the only place yeah. I've ever seen no, the weather. Been doesn't there. Change. <laughs> but the point of it is, is that you got to have, you got to train it, what what the weather is and what they're really going to handle. It can't yeah. be because it's going to rain today. We're never going to do any stuff. You failed those people. You're are you never? Well, unless you're never going to do that job, which task. you know you are. You know you're going to go out. So, there, so. so you can't allow like these weird dynamics in my Perfect world. Training to, day. Like, well, good. Well, now we get an opportunity to train, and what it would be like yeah. for real to do this. But for those of you who don't know me that well, the worse the weather, the more I like it. Because I've kind of not 
bored, but I'm kind of like, what is next? It's just to a learn? regular day. Yeah, it's what's just a regular day. something There's exciting? Just... I like it when that's stuff starts like getting going, crazy. That's why I'm like, let's go to rendering. Yeah, let's get something crazy going on. So that, the, my favorite is when there's something going on in training, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, a well, leak now, or now power I'm, outage. Jen now, had a power outage a few now weeks I'm ago. Focused. Now yeah. I'm super focused on what's going on because there's crazy going on. All right, now you got my attention. Locations multiple across the division or company. Um, when people don't train the same company, the same plant, same way. We have multiple trainers, but what I am spend most of my day and most of my evenings worrying about is making sure the product's the same. I'm not saying we do or don't. Uh, we try our heart out, but I will tell you that's a it's huge focus. It's something to be aware of. You it's have to focus. acknowledge that based on any variation in your trainers and based on when you're traveling. Ta- different or doing, places in the country, different yeah, You have to be acknowledging that there's that's an opportunity that Absolutely. could bite you. And so to not put buffers in place for that, that's I correct. think, is a fail to just not if you, if you train reality. during the winter in Minnesota, which we have, uh, there's a good chance you're going to have snow. Yeah. And, and then you take some people, you put them in the south where it's 100, and I love 100 degrees. And yeah. there's people that just lock up during training. So yeah. as a trainer, if you're going to manage training and you have training failures, pay attention to the time of year and the expectation you want for your people. So you get that. So when you're looking at multiple places across the country, schedule that out a little bit so you get the value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think another one too is it kind of goes into that. It's it's how you schedule and it's it's Absolutely. not identifying your absolute. So if your absolute is I've got to get 15 people trained. But I did not properly manage when I scheduled the training and I scheduled it over an audit or I scheduled it over right. a massive Which we get that project. All the time. Yeah. And now I only had two people go there. Well, now I've got to do another session. Correct. And now I've got all this added cost and all this added time to manage it and schedule it. And now, and, extra, and are those two people stuff. really trained if that job that they're being trained on required five as a minimum? Right. Right. And so now I spent all this time and energy to get a mixed result. When if I had just, you know, identified the most important thing here is getting 15 people trained in one class or, you know, seven people trained in whatever that is. Right. You know, you have to have an absolute. what that is. You have so, to say, this is the part we don't train. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, that kind of also goes to how the data is presented. If I've Absolutely. got two people in class... That's, that's a, a com- different environment. That's a different environment than if I've got 15 and everybody's bouncing ideas off each other where I've got two and it's just, you know, they're like doing what? I don't know. Monotone PowerPoint. I don't right. know what I'm doing with two people because I can't drill, you know? And so that's that's just a completely different feeling. And, and it goes also to the trainer is that if the trainer's not able to manage that or find a way to work through that. And and they're frustrated or upset or aggravated. Go back to attitude again. Yeah, I'm back to attitude again. They can feel that. Everybody yeah. can feel that, and that's a failure. They shouldn't be because you're killing that creative spark that can happen through discussion and brainstorming. Absolutely. And that's the whole point, right? Is to just be doing that. So now we've got the wrong class size, and that's throwing off all my hands-on stuff. Absolutely. And then I've got the weather's off. Maybe it's storming or it's snowing or it's 110 and I've got classroom changes. That happens just all the time. Where you gotta we're move this even during the day. Hey, yeah. at noon we have to have a meeting in here. Can you go to another place? You got it. Yeah, and it's way, I don't even know where this this training room is. It's 15 miles right. from where I parked so, or wherever. So it's not the failure of moving the room. It's the failure of not understanding that could happen. Yeah, so when I, I mean, go, so I'm when doing I go somewhere, drills, to, I'm doing drills, and I I can't use the same spaces anymore. Right, so I go on a Monday. Well, last week, last week, Thursday, Friday, you do different spaces. Yeah, you know the the place I'm going to this week is somewhere that we'll be using the same basic concept, but we'll have different controls we got to put in place, different procedures, and, and and you know what that's about? That's about that location that has an expectation, and if you don't meet that expectation, that's the failure. So yeah. you have to understand it can be hot or cold. So you need to prep. Check the weather ahead of time. Take the coat. You need to. The you, failure you, to you, prep and the failure to identify things happen. Electrical went out at one of the biggest plants in the entire state during my training. Absolutely. Cool. The, you know, not a big deal, except for the fact that now we've got arc flash boundaries and they're doing, they're pulling Absolutely. buckets and they're wearing, you know, PPE for dangerous level. But I still have to train yeah. everybody though. And then lunch could be late probably. Because if you've got no sure. power, lunch no, is going to yeah, be late. Yeah, they send everybody home. So I'm still with nobody 
at the plant at all, which was right. weird. You gotta eat. I'm still trying to figure out how they're gonna eat. How am I gonna feed them? Because yeah. the cafeteria group is gone. Are we going to the local convenience store to get how, the pizza at two in the morning? I, who, I mean, <laughs> who is authorized to move the trailer that can drive it on property? Because that's not everybody. That's correct. So I've got to have somebody with keys, somebody who can move it, somebody who's not involved in the powder power outage thing going on. And I've still got to figure out how am I gonna get in and out of doors with prox readers and stuff Absolutely. closing and, and you know what? failing open you or not still open. Have to produce a product that that employee can respond and deal with the next yeah, day they still got to be able to respond to whatever's going yeah. on and do that that thing and you know 10 minutes after i leave so you got a so, pre-plan not yeah. not not because that's, that's normal that's Chaos normal chaos is normal when you're changing in and out and so the inability to just identify that and anticipate what that's going to be and then already have in your head how i'm going to work through that that goes back to like, okay, well, then are you an expert if you don't right. understand that this are is Are you a normal? good trainer? Well, listen to some other episodes. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I, I mean, because if you're not understanding that this is this is normal, like it's it's abnormal for everything to be perfect. Oh. That is weird. And for those of you who don't know us that well personally, that's why we like this field. That's why we like our job. It never is boring. No. There's always something we can improve. Right. So then we go back to, uh, let's talk about some ethics. Uh, those of you who don't know me that well, we've turned down lots of work over the years because either wasn't the right fit or we weren't the right fit the way yeah. i decided that doesn't mean we didn't like the customer if i didn't believe i wasn't an expert i, I didn't, wasn't an I expert. didn't feel yeah. like i could deliver the, the level product. that i i knew they should have because i i understood enough to know this is beyond what i can i have deliver. to know that limitation yeah that's the first thing so the other thing about it is i do not believe you should train anyone on a task you don't understand so, or you haven't personally done or haven't. Yeah, I'm not in you know. that. So when people ask us, can you do five things? I will look at the list and we will do the three or two that I think I understand that I could have built out for the five. I understood that that it would probably be nice and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? That comes an ethical part where you have to say, this is not my wheelhouse. Well, so hire they, someone else and even help tell them who to hire. I've done that before in the past. These people are better at this than I am. Yep. And I basically gave competitors work, but yep. it wasn't right ethically for me to do that. Listen, I can do a PSM compliance audit all day long. I don't feel comfortable doing a mechanical integrity though, because I, I'm not doing not non-destructive. I'm not doing non-destructive yeah. testing. I'm not doing some of that stuff. So you, you know? should train on subjects and concepts you've never done. No, that's a failure. If I've never done something. Then why am I doing I, I How am I an expert if I've never done it? Yeah. I mean, I like to fish and my son is learning how to fish. You know what? He's done it weeks and weeks and weeks and he's just now get the part where he can throw the line out he's still not an expert so i mean how many times does it take to do something with your expert i don't know but you know what if if you've never done it at all there's no way you're an expert there's no, no. way you're a good trainer no because then you're making your client the canary and i don't like that yeah. i don't like that where they're like well i'm not really sure i've never actually tested my ideas before right. on this but let's hope you, we're, we're you a real go, company you go over there and do it yeah. so <laughs> let me know how that works for train you train on tasks and equipment the end user can't do and equipment they're not allowed to do. here's what i see all the time i go into places and they'll have an scba i saw this a few days ago and i say to them i didn't know you use scbas here well we don't didn't get them all yeah probably. you do <laughs> yeah, yeah i think if <laughs> yeah, you, you trained do. on them which they had I think if you have them, which they do, and I think the expectation is you're not going to use them, is un it's not correct. So the point of it is don't train people on stuff that they're not going to be allowed to do because you give them the wrong sense of, of confidence. Well, and, and so there's other parts to that, too. Like if we're not maintaining that equipment because, quote unquote, we don't use it, well, then, you know, it may not be functioning as it's designed. If we're not doing, you know, the hydrostatic testing, if we're right. not doing flow tests, if we're not doing, you know, all the PMs and inspections and stuff, then again, they may know how to use it. But if it's still available on the property and we're like, well, don't use it. Right. But if you, they're going to grab it on third shift if they're by themselves. They absolutely are. I mean, it's just what everybody that trains internal, external, uh, food safety, worker safety, ops, it, whatever you want to call it. Anybody that's because there's all kinds of training that locations do. You have to first say, what is the expectation, the end result? And if you know that you're not going to be allowed to do that after you train them, or they're not going to be allowed to, you are morally and ethically wrong to train them on that item. The way I look at it, because yeah. you you've changed the dynamic. Well, now they, they think they can they, do it. Now they're confused on what yeah. they can and just can't like, do. Just like we talked about in other episodes, we've had meter failures or equipment failures while we're training, yeah. and we don't keep going. We stop and do it correctly, because yeah. I believe if you train, 
that you can keep going around what you still train them to do it wrong. Well, when you have fall protection, like the fall indicators that pop or right. like the we fall stop. indicators on the winches and stuff, we you're, you're done. We're done. done. Meters fell, stuff breaks. We stop. You don't keep doing the process. So for, for all you out there, morally and ethically, don't train on stuff that you don't want them to do, including the way don't, you don't, do the Don't training. bring it up. Don't talk about it. We don't have, we're just not. And then if anybody nope. says anything, be like, well, that's, that's out of service that's right. and we don't use that. And tag it out of service. And, or take it, put or it in a storage it. shed in your property yeah, or secret closet. Off. Yeah, do something with it. Secret closet. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I say it's because uh, it, it gives false sense of security. It, it makes you believe they can do skills that they're really not capable of doing. And, and please, please don't do that. Yeah. All right. You, all right. So here's the other thing. Uh, all training. What's the number one thing for all training on this podcast? Reduce risk. Yeah. If your training makes more risk, then it was a fail. And, and, and I've got tons of examples. But the main thing is, if I go do a task and you train me on that task, and now it's riskier to do it than it was the day before, that's not correct. All training should reduce risk. That is yep. the point of training. Well, we kind of talked about that gray area a couple podcasts ago too, where it's like training, elevated work. Yeah, one of them. The training should address the weird gray area that yep. we don't talk about that happens on off shifts and on weekends. I talked. We're to, doing projects and non routine tasks. I talked about the ladder safety one a few weeks ago about it's not injured from the ladder use; it's the storage and pulling it down from storage where I could get hurt. So you've trained me on how to use the ladder. Great. But train me on the other hazards. Yeah, there's that other can things happen. also. It's yeah. not just don't lean outside the plane of the ladder because you could fall right. off. Train there's me on more. all the ways I can get hurt going to touch the ladder. And you like, I should have not used aluminum. Maybe I should use fiberglass. Yeah. You know, tell me what all the hazards are. I should be reducing risk. I shouldn't be increasing my training. Yep. Yep. Well, and so the other thing is too, is you know, we've got people who are bringing in trainers or having internal trainers, but no one's actually ever evaluated them. You got to evaluate them. You got to evaluate all. You got to know what they're saying. If they're saying weird mm -hmm. stuff or not weird stuff, or like their Absolutely. delivery's off, or they're not covering stuff, or they're not now, covering now your everyone program, needs to know, or their interpretation of your program is not really correct. Absolutely. Now, do I think that all trainers can improve? Yes. So, but one of the failures is when they don't. If you see the same class three years in a row, that's the, the, weird. That's a failure. You should There's nothing going on in the business new we that we have talk better. about in the last three years. Yeah. Nothing at all. Now, <laughs> do, you, do people's personalities, can they make themselves better? Yes. Can people teach themselves to be a better trainer? Yes. But if you see there's a stagnant, if you see that people aren't improving, I mean, you look at, if you were with me 20 years ago training compared to today, I hope I'm better. I think I'm better. And most people think I do a better job. But you have to keep self-evaluating. If you don't, you become part of the failure. Yeah, you're part of the problem then. Yeah, you, yep. You're creating the dynamic and you shouldn't be. You should be reducing risk every time you're doing training. Yep, driving it down and keeping up with the current trends. If the training's not keeping up with how you have moved your business, because every business is dynamic, Absolutely. we change lines, we, we change, change products, rooms. we change, yeah, yeah. add stuff, add rooms. If yeah. we're not capturing that in the training and updating according to the modifications we've made at the location, right. that's a fail. And, and you know what? Don't don't update the room and train her by three weeks later, but have them start working wrong. Yeah, that's the pre started Tra safety train stuff. Train them before they do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Lockout procedures are another yeah, one. Don't train do them the on lockout do procedures it. three weeks yeah. later after you're already making them do it for three weeks. That's that's not really ideal. We don't want to do that. So the other one is is the personal agendas. Yeah, they're they're weird. I don't love a personal agenda. I don't love the concept of I don't go to the training. And I'm never doing the tasks that the end users are that are getting the training, but I'm controlling who is giving the training. And the person I'm yeah. selecting is a friend. Those and, literally make me scratch but, my head if you're watching YouTube. I'm just, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a friend and they don't do the best job, but you know, yeah. or whatever. It, there's I an don't ethic and moral way that, that that person should have the best training available for the best end result, period. So I think a failure is when we're not being purists and keeping the right. end user's needs as the number one priority, right. selecting the best thing for the end user. And if you're not an end user and you're controlling that, you got to make sure that we're Absolutely. evaluating always, are we doing what's right for them? We are see, we keeping them safe? We see people run on instant investigations, uh, more training. Okay, but if you do the same training that you did before and someone had a I private agenda and it didn't do any good, that didn't do anything. 
No. no, you have to evaluate what's the goal of that training and be the purest. Well, and here's what else I'm going to tell you about personal agendas. Sometimes there is a tendency that we don't want to bring in a third party or a person from another location or, you know, at a sister plan or something. We don't want to bring that person in that knows more than us because now they're creating more work for me. Sure. And, and, that's, and, and, and that's weird too. So we, it's almost like, well, we're going to give them less because I don't want my load to be bigger. Absolutely. And I don't love that idea either. Sure. It's, now the other failures you want to think about is that you, you could have, um, I call it attitude, emotional, whatever. And what that means is I've had to go to locations the last few years where I had everybody thinking a certain way about me before I got there. Yeah. So the failure Reputation I had preceded you, even though I had never worked there or never been there. And even though the data was wrong, it still affected the training the first few hours of the day, because until they learned who I was, I was failing. Yeah. I had to, I had to find a way to get them to understand that I'm, I'm not whatever they heard or whatever they were, but I am here to help them. I'm here to do the right thing or whatever that list is. But you need to know that as a trainer, you may have that. So there yeah. may be this underground thing that's coming against you and, and you've got to get over that. Well, so. it depends if you do any other services too. Yeah. So I've noticed that, you know, there's a hesitancy to bring someone on site as a trainer to help you fix stuff if they're the one that found the opportunity. Right. People don't love me finding things wrong. Correct. <laughs> I so, mean, that's human nature. But, so it's like, well, I'm not going to bring you on so you can find more stuff wrong. Right. So, so a failure of training is, is sometimes training, you will find opportunities. You will find gap. You just will while you're training. You're walking somewhere. You're doing a subject. And, you're, and, and, and so I want any time that a trainer does training to get feedback of things that I can work on. But I will tell you that there is a tendency out there where people are like, we don't want to. So that ends up becoming a failure in itself because training a lockout tagout procedure should be finding a gap and fixing it. It shouldn't be just training on it. So the failure may not be the lockout procedure. The failure could be that we didn't capture it for the next person. Yeah. You, you've got to capture that data and use those gaps in training and use those failures and correct them so the other person doesn't have the same failure. Well, I think part of training is failing, right? You absolutely have to. Because how you have do to you, test systems. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Are you really testing it if you never fail a little right. bit in, right. in some in some capacity? I mean, that's part of it is is the learning process itself. So it it goes back to that continuous self evaluation of always improving. And every time we do a drill, every time my team locks out something out, they're improving. Absolutely. They're getting faster. Every time you stick a meter in water and it gets in the meter, one says, well, we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, guess what? They still do it Shut every year. Filter. And every year we talk about I not guess, doing it. I guess I know what the filter's for. <laughs> so, <laughs> every year. No, that's true. That is true. And and so along with that is the failure of like, we're not getting the right people or the right number of people in class. Absolutely. And I, you got to get the right people there. And I think a big part of that is whoever is scheduling the training is not the end user or the manager of the end yep. user and so there's like a breakdown in communication we didn't tell them until right before and we they're like well hey we have a project or we got a contractor yep. coming in or we got all this stuff going on so it's like well now we're scrambling and we don't get the right number of people in there or if we don't communicate with them that like hey this is required for you to do your job you understand that they can't do xyz tomorrow they can't wear a mask they can't lock out they have can't a forklift drive yeah. a forklift or wear you know use use a ladder elevator work right. stuff and if they don't go to this training they're expired they're you know whatever it's not communicating like the expectation is hey like they just got to go right. they just got to get here they just got to go and not doing that in a timely fashion so that the end users can can kind of organize and schedule people because they're just, still pulling them for shift coverage and you're you still, still gotta have coverage you're still affecting a lot of people's attitude yeah, and, so and, then they're and, aggravated when they come in, and that's or, not or great. Or weird, either. or embarrassed, and you, you don't want that. You want the product and the process to be great. Well, and so then that goes along with we didn't tell them what to wear, or we didn't tell them where the training is, or we didn't tell them it, it's going to be outside, or it's going to be in the blast freezer today, or it's going to be 110, or we're going to be on the plant floor, so wear your normal PPE, and they show up in shorts and a T-shirt, and you're like, we're going to be in the blast freezer today. Right. Right, doing the forklift stuff because that's the space they have. You got to let people know so that they can Absolutely. be comfortable. Uncomfortable people, you know, cold, hot, whatever, tired. They don't learn as well. They don't learn as well. And you got to watch your six o'clock start times. You know, 
Yeah. If, it, if everyone has to set up the floors and get the plant running at 6 a.m., don't start class at 6 a.m. Have people aren't going to show up and they're all stressed out. Make it 8. Well, then the people that are there are listening to their radios the whole time because they're trying they're, to they're, problem they're, solve. They're worried. Yeah, something's going on, yeah. inevitably, always. Yeah, you want people to listen during the trainings to get something out of the training. Yeah. I will tell you, if you are going to do training, this is a side note, you will get pushback how many minutes someone's got to be there. So yes, you will always. have to, you will have to decide. I've lost accounts because of that. I've lost accounts because I said I won't certify you because you missed half a day, and people get really unhappy. So part of the failure system of training is like Jen saying the expectations of you got to be there all day. Yep. It's also weird that a person wouldn't be there all day and they manage, and the person who's not a manager has to be there all day. It's back to that weird message. But what is what is the rules? So yeah, they got to have clear expectations and end results. Right, and if and if my management team is not making it a priority, whatever this is, that is sending a very clear message that it's not that important of a subject yeah. to everyone else. And now you're kind of in yeah. that so weird what it does, environment, it cre- that, that, that it weird creates, culture. It creates people being off course that day. It creates people saying, is this really what you need to do or not? I mean, you start. Just go ahead and certify me, but I wouldn't hear all day. Yeah, well, so that, you start, you start like, creating. Well, the these, rules don't apply to me. You start do, creating weird structure issues. So even the Culturally. training you're doing is still affected that day. It's it's, in, it's infecting your, your safety culture and the message that's being sent about what's important. It can mess up your whole absolute. class schedule to keep doing that all day. It, yeah. can, it can mess everybody up what they think is important. Yeah, they're so. all off. They're all off a little bit. So I think kind of to close just a little bit. Um, you got to make some goals. Make some goals. You want to make sure that you're clear on your absolutes about what do we need to accomplish? What is our price point? How are we going to manage that? What are we getting for the dollar? Here's my expectations of how we're going to move the business forward. And then during that training, we should be evaluating. Are we on course? Absolutely. And if we're not, well, let's redirect things and get back on course. And then after we're done, we have to evaluate too. Did that meet what we thought? Was it what we thought? Absolutely. Did we get what we thought we paid for? Did we did we move forward in the way that we thought? You know, yeah, now, when she's con, talking about that, I don't, she's not saying at the end of class, fill out a 10 question no. questionnaire of how much you love the class and want to do it. Because people sometimes just want to go home at the end yeah. of the day. And second of all, I don't really take much value in those. What I'm, I'm looking for is, is three weeks later team. and four months later, or like the call I made the other day, where a month later, they're still using the data. That's yep. what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm looking for a management team to critically evaluate without a personal agenda or anything okay. else saying like, you know, we wanted to get 17 people trained on this piece of equipment to lock it out. Were we able to accomplish that Absolutely. the way we did it? Maybe it was a structure issue and it worked out great. Maybe it was a structure issue and it was a disaster. I don't know. But that's what you're evaluating. And it's okay to have the list. It's, it's okay to say we didn't do well in these three things. Big deal. Critique it. Move but, on. But that's part of what the evaluation's for. Next time we'll yep. do better. Next time we'll keep doing that because we found out that was important. And that made was all the, It made all the difference. Yeah. But if you don't evaluate, you don't you don't capture that. You have to self evaluate your systems. You have to evaluate your trainers, and you have to. I think you got to be honest about you it gotta, too. You got to expect there will be failures, and every time. But that's why we're called a process improvement company. You're never done improving. No. You, you, you find a failure, you adapt, you move on, and keep going. So, yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Well. Anything else? No, I think that was a good one. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a Worker Safety Podcast. If you like what you heard here, please take a moment to write us a quick review, like, subscribe, and share our podcast so that others can find us. For questions or to request topics that you'd like to hear on our next show, please visit us at www.allen-safety.com. Thank you.